Today, you're gonna learn how to use GSAP's timeline to do very cool stuff like pause animations, resume animations, and even reverse them. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial on animations, but you could watch this full course on CSS animations from Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So in the previous video, we covered GSAP's Tween Max, and today we're gonna cover GSAP's, or Greensock Animation Platform, uh, their Timeline Max, and it's very, very cool. So just to show you, in the previous video, we created this landing page here, and we just had a simple animation animation where this uh, this section over here just animates in so if I refresh and hit play this is essentially the end of the last tutorial um, but the thing that's different about this tutorial is the fact that we're you, you instead of using tween max we're using timeline max for this and this gives you some uh, extra features that you can use for more complex animations uh, so again if I refresh this hit play we can do things like pause we can resume and we can also easily rewind. Now there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do. So I really suggest after this uh, tutorial, checking out their Timeline Max page, also in the documentation. Uh, there's also a really cool uh, GS or uh, GreenSock dev tools that will help you debug your animations that you can include. I will probably cover this as well. All right, so um, a few of you mentioned in the previous tutorial that uh, GreenSock is usually used for more complex animations, but here's the thing. In terms of teaching, you have to learn how to walk before you can run. So that's my concept behind these. So um, you can g gain access to this project here uh, in the description, I've made it a GitHub available, and then that way you can start with me in this tutorial, which we're gonna do right now. So before though, make sure you subscribe. All right, so I'm here using our previous project from yesterday and yesterday's video. I'm gonna link that in the description um, so you can check that out. I would definitely recommend if you're new to GSAP to check that out first um, because understanding tween light will um, and tween max will make your life a lot easier when we go on to the next step which is this video um, so uh, you can grab this from the github of course and hopefully i'm not repeating myself here um, but let's just check out what we have right here so i'm going to hit go live and this is a, a live extension plugin for visual studio code and if i click watch here that is our uh, animation and as you can see um, we're not toggling back on back and forth and um, for doing something like that like uh, like reversing an animation that'd be a great use case for using timeline all right so first thing we have to go ahead and include another script here from the CDN uh, and just so you know where to search for that if we go to um, a new browser window here let me get this up um, I'm gonna do uh, let's see here green sock CDN all right right here we'll find all the CDN versions of um, uh, tween max tween light timeline max in timeline light so you may be wondering what's the difference between timeline light and timeline max so if you can you want to stick with timeline light um, if your project doesn't require some of the added features from timeline max now you can find those right here in the uh, the documentation uh, if we go back here to docs and we go to timeline max it's gonna let you know um, what exactly it offers so it says it offers exactly the same functionality plus some useful but non-essential features like repeat yo-yo delay and a few of these um, so just so I can kind of cover um, some of these features we're gonna use timeline max for this all right um, so the first thing we'll do is uh, timeline max.min.js. This one right here. I'm going to copy the script tag. I might be behind it because I'm on the green screen here. And then just paste this in uh, right there. Um, actually, I prefer to put it right here. There. All right. So um, the way we restructure this, because currently we're using tween max and not the timeline, uh, it will go like this. Um, so first of all, we have our click event. 
which is defined as an ID, get element by ID. Of course, we're using pure vanilla JavaScript. You can use um, Angular, Vue, and um, React if with this if you want. They have guides on their site, and I'm also going to create tutorials for that. Um, but we're using you know, just pure vanilla JavaScript to get the ID here, the button ID of CTA. So when that's clicked, uh, what's inside of here is ran. We're going to take this out, though outside of that click event and defined it right here. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and make a couple of adjustments. But first, we have to create a new timeline. All right. So we do that by var. We'll call this TL for timeline, new timeline max. And we open up in an object here optionally. Um, right now, we're not going to put anything in it but we will shortly. There's a variety of different properties that you can experiment with. And then after this, we simply replace uh, the tween max with this new variable right here. So I'll just paste those right into there. All right, so now if we save this, we go back to our project, we'll notice uh, we have a few things occurring here, but it doesn't look exactly correct because we still need to make adjustments uh, based on this. They're not all animating incorrectly. Um, and also it's obviously not happening on the watch here click event because we took it out. Um, so just a few things that we wanna change. Um, first of all, we'll see that uh, we have a delay property here and this is specific to uh, tween max and tween light. We don't need to add this. Um, what we can do is we take this out, all right, right here. And if we wanna add uh, a delay, we put a comma here after this object parameter where we have our different transformations taking place and then just a numeric value of some sort, like one for one second. Um, we can also choose to emit that if we want and they'll just happen sequentially. Um, let's just hit play here to see what happens now. All right, and we're gonna go back and it looked pretty much the same. Um, what I wanna do is put in right here on our box element, which is the thing that comes in last, we want that to come in a lot quicker. So what we'll do is put in that comma and we're gonna say quotes, we're gonna say minus equals and two. So this will occur in a negative two seconds. So you'll see it's gonna show up a lot quicker. All right, much like that, uh, which is more consistent with what it was looking like earlier. We can even probably take this down to 2.5. And you know what? I may even make that 3.5. There we go. All right, so as you can see, uh, you can control exactly when these come in um, by either just completely uh, emitting this value right here, uh, and in which case it will only, the only, these steps will only occur once the duration of the previous step has finished. But you can control that and add even a more of a delay if you want by uh, just putting a, a second value here uh, I, with also either this plus or negative option right here. So if we hit save, you'll see that it took a little bit longer here. Let's put, uh, let's say we'll put, uh, let's put 0.5 here. See if we notice much of a difference. All right, I think I like that better. So as you can see, there's a lot of experimentation that can be had just to, to get the animation correct. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and we wanna make this so that it doesn't occur when the page loads. So one of the properties that it accepts is paused. So this means by default, it's gonna start on being paused and it's not going to play. So now we refresh, it doesn't occur, but also there's no click event because we haven't been able to play it. So in this case, if we wanna play it, all we have to do is type in TL, play, save it. 
and there we go. So now we can trigger this animation from anywhere in our code if we wish. Now, what if we wanted something to happen when this animation is completed? Well, we can pass in on complete and either reference a function that's defined elsewhere uh, in the code, uh, like my function. And by the way, you would not put the parentheses. You just simply put my function and that's it. Or we could define the function right here like this. And then just we'll say console log finished. So when the animation is finished, we should see in the console right there. And as you can see, it showed up right when it was finished. And by the way, I didn't make this responsive, so that's why it'll look like garbage uh, when I mess with the viewport width. And there we go. All right, so what if we wanted to reverse this animation? So this is one of the great areas um, with timeline. We'll see that reversing is very simple. So what we can do, we'll remove that console log, and all we have to say is this dot reverse. So when it finishes, it should just deconstruct itself backwards. Look at that awesome stuff. All right. So instead of that, uh, let's say, for instance, we uh, would want it to reverse based on like a, a toggle. So let's go up here and we'll change this from watch here to play. All right. And just for the just for the the label of it. Um, to make, so it makes a little bit more sense. And of course, we're doing this do, just to demonstrate this project. This doesn't really make sense in the concept of this landing page. Um, but still, uh, just to show you how to do it, um, what we'll do is we're going to create a, a, a we're going to remove this on complete function here. All right. And then in here on our button, let's go ahead and instead of just making that a play, We'll go ahead and put in tl.reversed. And this is a uh, another uh, property that will allow us to de define whether or not it is uh, currently re reversed. Uh, and you'll see how this works out in a second. So uh, if we want to toggle this value from, and it's a Boolean value, true or false, uh, we can just simply put in a, an exclamation point in tl reversed like that. All right, so up here, we're gonna also put in a tl.reversed and we're gonna set it to true. All right, so what it's saying is once it gets to the end of this animation, it's also going to set reversed as being true. And you'll see how this is important in a second. Um, and then we're going to put an if statement. We're going to say if tl.reversed, so it's saying if this is true, then we'll say tl.reverse. So we're not doing the, um, the, the past tense of it. We're just doing reverse. And that's an, uh, that will define or signify that it should play it, but in, except in reverse. You can't just hit play again. And that's why we're doing this if else statement. So then we'll say else tl.play. All right, so if I reversed is true, then we're gonna run tl reverse, which means this will make everything run in opposite direction or deconstruct it. Um, if tl reversed is false, then we just run TL play, all right? And we're setting TL reverse true on the first play uh, so that this will all work correctly. So now if we run this, it should act as a toggle button. So if I hit play, we'll let it run through and then hit play again, there it goes. And so we can do this indefinitely. And by the way, this could be based on a hover. This could be based on a page scroll. Um, and particularly when it comes to a page scroll, it would be ha obviously handy um, for when you want to your, your, your UI animations to replay when it comes back into view. And I'll be covering that in a different tutorial. And there you go. It just works indefinitely. So as you can see, it's very powerful. Also, uh, there's some other properties here, of course, in Timeline Max uh, outside of pause. We also have the ability to repeat. 
So um, what I could do is put uh, repeat and also say two. We'll save that. All right, so if we, re yep, obviously it'll just start from the very beginning and keep on going. And then what we could do, and by the way, it did it for a total of three times because I put repeat two, but it also played once initially. Um, if we just put this to one to demonstrate the following effect, we could also pass in, and this is specific to timeline max, yo-yo true. That will mean, well, instead of me just telling you, let me just show you. So this should only repeat twice, but watch what happens. Now, because we set yo-yo, it's gonna just automatically reverse. And I guess it counts as a play right there. So if we change this here to two, and let it go again, it should come back up. There we go. All right. So the play in reverse and then the play counts uh, obviously as a total of three. Uh, so if you wanted this to go back out, you would have to increment this to three. So we have a total of four. All right. So we're not going to keep that, however. All right. So you can also play uh, in pause. So let me show you how to do that real quickly. I'm going to create another button. And this button, uh, we're just going to copy uh, Shift, Alt, and Down. We'll say pause. And then we'll call this pause for the ID. And then we'll copy this section right here. All right, we'll say pause. All right, so we're gonna do pretty much almost the exact same thing here because I wanna have a toggle as well for that button. So what I'll do is copy this, just the if part. All right, so we'll say if we have sort of the same thing for uh, paused. We have paused. So if paused is true, then we're going to say play. So if it's currently paused, we want to play it. Um, otherwise, we're going to say pause. And we're also going to set tl.paused to true. All right, so watch this. Pause it right there. There we go. Play it and it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, let me figure that out. Oh yeah, it's because obviously I need to wrap this. All right, in the block there. <sighs> silly, silly, silly. Pause, unpause, play, pause, play, there we go. And as you can see, it works flawlessly. Now, the reason it didn't keep on reversing it is because we this uh, is set to play. So it'll just keep on playing instead of hitting reverse. So you would have to add more functionality if you wanted some uh, situation to work uh, as you would expect it to. Very, very cool. So as you can see, uh, based on the documentation for Timeline Max, there are a lot of other methods that we did not cover here. Um, you can go into, you can get the current progress, you can go to uh, <clears throat> restart and resume, you can also seek to a specific area. So you can see how powerful this can be, especially in the context of creating some type of player of some sort. Um, you can do stagger as well. And these are all things I'm going to cover <clears throat> or plan on covering here in the near future. Uh, but for now, I think you've learned enough uh, at a very basic level just to get your feet wet with playing uh, with the timeline and also tween max and tween light. All right. All right. So hopefully you found that useful. Going forward, we're going to be covering more intricate real world examples, such as using Greensock in relation to scroll and also landing pages, modern landing page design. So I'm really excited about that. Make sure you subscribe to get those videos and I'll see you later. Goodbye.